Hi everybody, Cash Kidry here on behalf of Bodies by Cash. I want to thank you again today for tuning in. I also want to thank you for the great feedback I've been getting from the previous videos. A lot of the questions we've had, a lot of the comments. Also, just so you know, uh, before we get started today, if you ever want to tune into our website at www.bodiesbycash.com, you can sign up for our mailing list or also go on there and shoot us an email. Email would be info at bodiesbycash.com. Today, I really want to touch on a topic that comes up all the time when anytime the word diet gets thrown around, uh, most of the time you're going to hear the word carbohydrates or cut carbs or how many carbs are you eating, something along the lines pertaining to carbohydrates. Um, of the misconceptions out there, you know, we touched on one the last video about calories, how people think they have to eat less, lose weight, which would be less and less calories, and that's not true. Um, the other one would be, in order to burn fat or to get the body you want, you have to get rid of the carbs. And that is not true. Uh, I'm not sitting here telling you, don't even pay attention to your carbs, eat all the carbs you want, eat any kind of carbs you want. I'm not saying that at all, but I am saying that by completely cutting the carbs out of your diet or even restricting to such a low number, you're only setting yourself up for failure uh, in the long run. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to break that down to you how, how that happens, okay? Uh, you know, do carbs make you fat? No, they do not. If you're eating the right carbs and you're eating the right amounts and you're eating it at the right time of day, carbohydrates, if anything, will actually accelerate your fat loss. You know, and that's the main thing you need to look at is, as a, from a metabolism standpoint, by cutting your carbs out, you're really, you're, you're, you're going to get the benefit in the front end, but you're really going to hit a plateau. And most people that do the whole low carb thing, you know, they drop 15, 20 pounds, but after that, they kind of just stuck. Okay, and the biggest reason for it, two two reasons, is number one, like I said, the metabolism actually shuts down, and number two, the majority of the weight you lost, I say majority, about half of the weight you lost came from water weight, okay, because when you pull carbohydrates out, you're pulling the water out of the muscle, so that's why you drop so much weight initially, I mean, think about it, if, if you were eating whatever you wanted today or haven't been following any diet whatsoever, and all of a sudden tomorrow, you start off the day and you eat five meals with just protein, some healthy fats, but no carbohydrates. Okay. I guarantee you in five days, you would have dropped close to 10 pounds, maybe more. It might be 15 pounds. Do you think you lost that much fat? No. If you drop 10, you might have lost two, three pounds of fat. The rest of it is water weight. So these people that do the whole low carb thing, well, you can't do this forever can't just say, I'm never going to eat carbs again for the rest of my life, okay? So when you start incorporating carbohydrates again in your diet, you swell up like a sponge. Your body just retains that fluid, and then the rest of the weight that comes on because your metabolism slowed down is a lot of body fat, okay? So uh, like I said, we're going to talk about that a little later on, but to me, the whole low-carb thing is definitely a quick fix. And it sets you up for failure. Okay. This, look, this whole dieting process, this is not something that you want to be on a wild roller coaster ride and keep losing 20 pounds, gaining 22 pounds, losing 25 pounds, gaining 26 pounds. Who wants to continue their life like that? You need to find something that is a balanced meal regimen that is consisting of the right, the right amount of proteins, the right carbs, and the right fats that you can create it as a lifestyle, you know, that fits in your busy schedule. Okay, that's not going to hinder your, you know, performance at work. That's another thing with carbohydrates. When you pull your carbs out, I mean, trust me, I'm sure you've, you've tried this before, okay? And if you haven't, you know someone who has. And what is some of the things they experience? Their energy is at an all-time low because carbohydrates is your main energy source, okay? Uh, number two, what's another thing? They can't remember what they just did. You'll walk out your house... After you pull your carbs out of your diet in three, four days, and then going forward, you'll leave your house, circle around the block, and go back inside because you can't remember if you left your coffee pot on or your stove on, even though you turned it off. Because your short term, your memory is just gone. Your brain needs a certain amount of carbohydrates to function properly. You know, there's different researches out there 
but the most researchers you'll find is going to put it anywhere between 70 and 110 carbs for a 24-hour period that your, your brain needs to function at an optimal level. That's the minimum. Now, granted, I mean, I got, I got some people I die that they're eating 200, 300 grams a day. When I'm talking about the minimal for your body to function, particularly your brain function, uh, from, like I said, from just overall vitality, uh, efficiency, you need a minimum of 70 carbs a day, you know? So by pulling it, like I said, you're going to give, you're going to lose a lot of weight in the beginning. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that the low carb diet does not work. You're going to get results, but it's only mostly in the beginning, but the disaster it sets you up for the failure it sets you up for. It's just not worth it. You know, the only time I would suggest doing a low carb diet or shall I say zero carb diet, is if, for example, someone gives you a phone call tomorrow and they say, hey, look, we have a, uh, throwing a big beach bash in 16 days and you haven't been dieting, you haven't been exercising, you haven't been doing anything. So yeah, the clock is ticking. You know, you only have basically two weeks to, and you want to drop a good 15 pounds. Well, yeah. The low carb route is probably the best, you know, bet for you. But besides a press for time situation like that, there's no reason to do this because you got to think of the long haul. You want to set yourself up so that you can continue to get the body you want and sustain it, not gain it all back. Okay. Um, so that goes really into, you know, why low carb diets fail. It's, it's simply because it sets you up for failure. It shuts your metabolism down. Okay. Most of the weight you lose is water weight. And then the second you eat any kind of carbs, even if it's even if it's the, the healthiest carbs possible, like say complex carbs that really don't put a lot of water weight because it doesn't mess with your insulin level as much, you know, you're still going to blow up and swell up. So it's not whether or not you get there and then you start eating healthy carbs, any kind of carbs is going to swell you back up. So that's the biggest reason why, you know, it's, it's a quick fix. That's all it is. Okay, so... To, to answer the question, you know, does carbs make you fat? No, they do not make you fat. You just got to find the right balance and the right type of carbs. I think that's where people are conflicted. They really don't un understand and don't know what carbs are really good and what carbs are bad. I'll tell you this, you know, there are a percentage of carbs that will be very detrimental to, you know, hinder your progress going forward and actually make you fat. And those are the ones that are really you know, consisted of a lot of sugars, simple sugars, like candy and sweets and stuff like that. Those are the ones that really spike your insulin level, which I'm going to get on right now. The next topic is insulin. Okay. Um, higher glycemic carbs, you know, ones that are kind of moderate, like I like to use, for example, you know, wild rice, red potatoes, uh, you know, couscous, uh, different things like that are not going to spike your insulin level like Skittles would, or chocolate, or, you know, a piece of cake, you know, so that's more of the moderate, and those are the ones, the moderate, you know, uh, glycemic carbs, are the ones that I'm really, you know, telling you to uh, incorporate with the, with the complex carbs, such as the brown rice, the sweet potatoes, the oatmeal, the Ezekiel breads, uh, you know, those type of carbohydrates like that, that consist of a lot of fiber because they burn very, very slowly. But you need to have some moderate glycemic carbs, like I said, such as red potatoes, white potatoes, you know, white rice, wild rice. You know, a lot of people fear those carbs and think, well, man, if I eat white rice, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get fat. Well, no, you're not. If you're exercising and as long as you're not eating white rice late at night before you go to bed, uh, and you're keeping, you know, portion control, you're not eating, say, two cups of white rice, you're eating, say, a cup or a half a cup, you're fine, you know, and it can't all be moderate, highly uh, glycemic carbs, you know, so if all you're eating is white rice throughout the day, well, then, yeah, that is going to be detrimental, but if you're eating white rice, you're eating, you know, five to six meals of protein, you know, that help bind with carbohydrates, because, you know, if you're eating the white rice, you're also eating it with protein. Okay, so it's going to slow down the digestion as well. And like I said, the rest of the day, you know, earlier in the day or whatever, you're eating complex carbs as well. So the combination of all of this, number one, keeps the body guessing 
and keeps the metabolism running in high gear. Where if you were to pull your carbs out, like I said, it ain't going to take but a few weeks. Your metabolism is, is going to stall. Okay. So insulin, for example, most people, in fact, anyone who is overweight, I don't want to know that if they just got on a diet two weeks ago, we're talking the majority of the past year. Okay. What have they been doing? I can guarantee you their diet consists of carbohydrates that are higher glycemic carbs. Just like I just said, whether it's, we're talking candy, sweets, uh, you know, we're talking flour, uh, you know, starches, carbs that basically are going to spike your insulin level and cause your pancreas to release more and more insulin, okay, to basically to lower your uh, blood sugar, okay, because your blood sugar is going to skyrocket. And by doing this over and over again, well, number one, that ultimately leads you to become a diabetic down the road. Uh, but the more and more you do this, okay, the more and more times your insulin level is skyrocketing, your blood sugar is going through the roof over and over again, what happens is, is that down here, I got your fat cells are sealed off, okay? So you got to think, your body, from a, from a fuel standpoint, it uses the, the glycogen that's in the blood and the muscle, okay? The, that's, that's your stored carbohydrates, your food that you've eaten throughout the day. So it uses that as fuel, okay? It also uses stored body fat as fuel. And if you're not eating enough food, if your calories are really restricted, it will also use muscle as fuel. I could even take it one step further. If you're really starving yourself, your body will actually metabolize and break down its own vital organs for fuel. So your body can actually chip away at your own heart, your liver, if you're eating you know, say under a thousand calories for an extended period of time. And if you're doing a lot of physical activity, which demands more fuel, well, then your body is, your body's going to get fed one way or another, whether you choose to feed it or it has to eat itself for fuel. So here's the thing. The more and more you keep spiking your insulin level, eating these high glycemic carbs, such as, like I said, all the sweets and things of that sort, what happens is, your body will start to take less and less from your stored fat. So instead of basically having you as a metabolism burning machine, you know, that's continuing to burn and, and chew up food and allow you to keep on getting leaner and leaner, what happens is you turn into a fat storing machine, okay? And people want to know, like, you know, why, why now I'm storing, you know, more fat at an alarming rate where two years ago I did it. You know, yeah, does it have something to do with your age? That you're getting older? Of course. But a lot of it has to do with this, that the irregular sporadic eating, you know, one day you're doing good, the next day you're throwing your insulin and blood sugar through the roof. Okay, doing this over and over again, you know, the, the, fat, the fat cells get sealed off. So your body is not gonna take from the stored fat for fuel, it's gonna take from either muscle and, and for energy, and that, and that causes you to lose muscle, okay? So not only does this work against you in uh, storing fat, it works against you and it can take away from your muscle if you don't have the right nutrients in the body, okay? So once again, that's, that's, that's the biggest separation between carbohydrates, and that's why most people are afraid of carbohydrates because they don't know how to distinguish what is the right carbs for me and what is the wrong carbs for me? They just want to put it all into one category and say, all carbs are bad, let's get rid of them all. Okay, so you must know these things. So when it comes to carbs that you should be eating, you need to stick to, like I said, complex and moderate glycemic. So you don't just stay away from the simple sugars. Stay away from the, you know, the, the, the white breads, all the things like that that, uh, that have flour and so forth. Okay, so I know a lot of you right now are sitting there saying, well, I know people who, eat a lot of those higher glycemic carbs and sugars, such as candy, sweets, ice cream, whatever, and they lose weight. So what you're saying is not accurate. Okay. I'm not saying you can't lose weight by eating high glycemic carbs if your calories are way down here. And that's the people you're talking about. I can assure you their calories are super low. As you'll see right here, I'm going to talk about, you know, can you eat many simple sugars and lose weight? Yes, you can. 
when your calories dip under 1,200, you know, anywhere around that number, especially closer to 1,000. So say, for example, you know, uh, uh, what people would think is a healthy high glycemic sugar, like fruit. Fruit can make you fat, but it's high glycemic sugars, and it's also considered healthy to some people. Uh, fr- I do use fruit on my diets, but obviously always in the morning, and I usually typically uh, combine something with it that is complex so that it's not going to have the same uh, you know, insulin spike that it would have without binding it with the other carb that's a slower, uh, that's a more of a uh, complex carbohydrate. So the question is, can you eat simple sugars and lose weight? Yes, you can. But where is the weight coming from? Okay. So if you're eating a thousand calories a day and, you know, that's comprised of some ice cream, some pe- maybe a slice or two of pizza, and you're having a couple cookies, okay, and you're losing weight because the scale's coming down and you're excited, that you're losing as much muscle mass as you are fat, okay? And not only that, when you dip that low in your caloric intake, like I previously mentioned, I call that the danger zone, which is where when you stay at a certain point for an extended period of time of a low caloric intake, your body starts metabolizing everything for fuel. Because you're not giving it enough fuel to function properly. So now it has to start taking away from your muscle. Uh, it takes from fat as well, but it also can take away from your vital organs. Okay. That's when it becomes seriously dangerous. And that's why, you know, all the low carb and the low cal- calorie diet, those two, which if you think about it, 90% of the diets out there are based on that. Okay. Think about Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is all about Count, uh, points, a point system. But you can eat whatever you want as long as it's the points. Well, that falls into what I'm talking about here. Meaning you can eat pizza and ice cream as long as it's only a certain amount of points, meaning a certain amount of calories. Okay. Because that's what we're talking about. Portions, the more, the bigger the portion, the more the calories. Okay. So, and then the rest of them are all low carb diets. Think about the Atkins diet. Uh, South Beach, you know, all these different type of diets that is all either based on low carbs or basically a point system restricting your calories more and more and more. And both those diets set you up for failure. And that's something you cannot do. Do not set yourself up for failure. When you get on these diets, they're not a lifestyle of a diet. It is not possible or even realistic to think that you can keep your caloric intake around a thousand calories a day. You can't possibly do that. You're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to end up in a hospital is what's going to happen. Okay. And then to think that you can eat no carbs for the rest of your life, you can't possibly think that. And like I said, the minute you get off those diets, which I call them the quick fix diets, they're geared for the first month or the first six weeks. The minute you come off of them, you're going to gain all your weight back because both those diets, the calorie restricted diet, where you're eating low, low, low calories, but it really doesn't matter what type of calories it is, and the low carb diet, both those diets slow your metabolism down, and also you lose muscle mass, which also slows the metabolism down. So the second you come off those diets and you want to eat, I mean, when it comes to the calorie restricted diet, even the slightest bit increase in calories, you take somebody who's eating a uh, thousand calories a day. Well, you need to realize what's happening with the body. Because you went from say 1,700 calories a day or 2,000 calories, and now you're eating 1,000 calories a day, your body begins to slow itself down the way it actually processes food at a much slower rate because it knows that it has to reserve its fuel because you're not feeding it what it needs. So it's actually in starvation mode. So what it does, it basically tries to hold on to everything. So you're burning fat at such a slow rate. So now you add that 1,000 calories and you say, you know what? I'm going to bump up. I used to do 1,700. So I'm going to come up to 1,400. I should be safe there. Wrong. Now you bump up to 1,400 and you start gaining fat. And you don't understand that when you were at 1,700, you were maintaining You went down to a thousand, you were losing weight. 
Now you're back up to 1,400, which is still 300 less than you were previously doing when you wasn't doing, wasn't gaining weight at all, and now you start gaining fat. How does this happen? That's how it happens, because you're screwing up your metabolism by these yo-yo diets, eating less and less calories. Your body gets, every time you restrict yourself down to these low number of calories, your body gets better and better at storing body fat, okay? And that's what you need to understand. Your body, every time you get to a low deficit like that, it gets better at conserving its fuel source, which is going to hold on to fat more and more and more. So you essentially, you're teaching your body how to store fat at the best rate possible by doing the low carb and the low calorie. So if, if you still convinced that that is the way to go, then good luck to you. And I guarantee you that you're going to keep on running around chasing your tail because you're going to be losing 15, 20 pounds, gaining 15, 20 pounds, and keep doing this over and over and over again. And each time you do it, your metabolism is taking a hit every time. And the second you want to eat just normal, you're going to blow right back up. So you, you know you can't set yourself up for failure. Okay, and also, once again, you need to really understand what I'm saying here when I say I'm not stating that you cannot get results from the low calorie and low carb diets. It's not what this message is about. It's the fact that what are the co at what cost are you paying to get this minor results? And when I say minor results, the results is coming from more of the scale. And yes, you will downsize, but that's basically all you're doing. So you take someone who say is 25% body fat, they lose 30 pounds on the low calorie diet or the low carb diet. And then at the end of 30 pounds, for some strange reason, they're sitting at 22% body fat. Their body fat really didn't even decrease because as a whole, they still have almost the same amount of ratio of fat to muscle for their weight as they did with the extra 30 pounds because you're losing it from everywhere. So all you're essentially doing is becoming a smaller version of yourself. So if, you, if, if you're a woman that's 160 that doesn't really like the way you look at 160, well, I can assure you losing 30 pounds doing it by this approach, by starving yourself and low carbon, and you get down to you know 130, so you drop 30 pounds, all you're going to be is a smaller version of what you was at 160. You're not going to be more toned. You're not going to have that firm look that you're looking for because you lost muscle in the process to get there. And like I said, have fun while you're at 130. Enjoy yourself because you're not going to be there long. Because the second you start eating more carbs or more calories, scale is going to jump up at probably three times the rate you lost the weight. Okay, if not faster than that. So. The main thing, you know, I want you to take from this video is you can't set yourself up for failure. You've got to find a balanced diet, whether it's working with some coach, somebody that's in your hometown, whether you're working with me, whoever it is, you've got to have the right amount of protein, carbs, and fats to not only get the results, but to keep the results, to keep yourself from going through this, you know, vicious cycle, this roller coaster ride. You know, you don't want to have to keep, you know, entering each new year having to lose 30 pounds or drop, you know, six dress sizes or as a guy have to lose, you know, try to go from a 40 to a 32 inch waist. You don't want to have to keep doing that. But by taking that approach with the low carbs and the low calories, you're going to continue to do this. I'm telling you right now, it's going to keep happening. You know that, you know, I mean, the definition of insanity is much of a cliche it is. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You can't keep dieting the same approach knowing what's going to happen to you after it. You've got to change your strategies. And the only way you're going to build a body that's going to last, that's going to continue to keep the body, once you get there, you have to have a balanced diet. Okay? One that's not low carbs. I'm not telling you to put the carbs through the roof, but you got to find a balance, something that works for you. Okay? So I want to thank all of you today for tuning in this video and also I want to thank you for watching the previous videos as well. Uh, stay tuned for our next video and our next topic that will be coming out uh, in the next few weeks. Also, if you have any other questions or want any topics regarding nutrition, training, supplementation, cardio, etc., be sure to go to my website at www.bodiesbycash.com and sign up for my newsletter 
you'll be getting all kind of weekly emails, uh, like I said, in, in regards to all those topics. Uh, but thank you once again for tuning in into this video. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time.